conversations are about discrimination and prejudice that people face in Lane County. And I was wondering if we could talk about some of that that you have faced personally or that you know of people living with disabilities face living in Lane County. So sometimes before COVID, before COVID Sometimes before COVID, I would be out in the community. People, people would ignore me. Ignore him. Uh, and no. No one. Not They're not understanding his disability. Yeah. Which I witnessed that. People yeah. just blatantly ignoring him, not talking to him, and like talking to me instead of him. Mm -hmm. So sometimes in the past, people have uh, had to help him get money out of his backpack or whatever, and they would they would steal his money from him. Sometimes he would notice. Mm. 
Done besides fixing sidewalks to help other people with this living with disabilities in the community. Well, 
I said, so it sounds like you're really aware of the resources in Lane County and have been able to um, access them. How easy do you think it is for uh, someone else uh, with a disability to access? I'm not sure. How did you learn about them and how did you find them? I helped start Lila. At the first meeting. At the first meeting. Did I help him? At the at the Hilliard Center. Which college then. Uh, okay. Oh, so what the people in the people? Uh, they connected me to Lila. So, what about um meeting people for, for friends or romantic encounters. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Me, uh, because uh, I try to uh, it's hard uh, to meet, meet people. For like a dating aspect, mm -hmm. uh, he he you know he gets lonely. He he wants you know love and affection and um and that's that's something that he's we we've tried to like look up things online that cost money to meet people. How amazing mm -hmm. would it be if we could just get all individuals together and they could come together and see you know what connections can be made, you know. Um, it's hard for him to go out on his own and meet people. Mm -hmm. You know, he has cerebral palsy and he has a hard time communicating. If you don't know him, you're going to misunderstand him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he likes his independence, so he doesn't want us, yeah. you know, oh, him around oh, him. He <laughs> oh, you're at home with COVID. But that'd be a great resource <laughs> where uh, yeah. it's developmental or or mental disabilities could could get together and just connect and become friends. Yeah. Uh, allies. And allies. Yes. Had a couple groups like that, which we just found out about, but they don't do them now because of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. COVID has definitely put a kibosh on a lot of things. <laughs> But I think with allies, it's just the people at allies, right? Mm. Yeah, I mean, you get Alvin Taylor, OSLP, Hummingbird, everybody. It's like a big old, mm. like a rave or something. <laughs> a big yeah. old concert or something. Yeah. Yeah, big party at the shop. But if I have you ever had to be late for an appointment because there wasn't enough room on the bus for you? Or that could be a resource. Mm -hmm. Or have you ever seen anyone else that had a disability be late or not be able to be on the bus because the spots were already taken? What if they're going to like a doctor's appointment or something? Yeah. That's a resource that could be helpful. Mm -hmm. They're sitting in the rain and there's no bus cover or they're just sitting there in their chairs getting drenched. And then they can't get on the bus because two people are already on there, which is no fault of anybody. Or waterproof, waterproof wheelchairs. Yes. Cry when they get wet. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Which all chairs cry. They, if they get wet. Never power wash. Never power wash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go through the car wash, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you what do you what are your feelings about the Biden administration? Do you think that there's going to be some changes made in the future? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. In, in infrastructure. Infrastructure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Package. Yeah. Passes. Yeah. Uh, and I um, hope. He does. He does some more. Uh, oh, on. Disabled. People. People. Just yesterday, Hollis did say he's like, Man, uh, President Biden's awfully quiet in comparison to President Trump, isn't he? It's kind of nice <laughs> and sincere. It seems more sincere, obviously, but we had a good little talk over that. So, did you go to any of the rallies? I know that you're trying to stay in for COVID. COVID. No way. No way. No way. Yeah. It wasn't for COVID. I probably been at every one. And he probably would have been at the protests for Black Lives Matter and all that stuff too. This year. He actually just started getting out more in the last few months and social distancing with people and stuff out in the community. Because it wasn't like a lot of people, uh, that's another thing that, that's another funny thing. Um, so, his able friends, some of them understand, like, okay, you know, he's high risk, his parents are high risk, whatever, you know, we really need to pay attention. But the other people that didn't take COVID seriously, like, didn't wear masks, wouldn't social distance, wouldn't stay back, you know what I mean? So that that was kind of interesting trying to navigate that, to advocate for him to help be his voice to keep him safe with people that are mobile and can just move in an instant and do whatever they want. Um, which was really sad because here his staff is like, you know, basically like telling people that normally would just walk up to them and give them hugs and kisses that they need to back up. And mm -hmm. you know, it, made, it made it very stressful, not only for Hollis, but, you know, everyone, you know, patients would be very helpful with people with disabilities. You, mm -hmm. you know, to give them a second to process, respond, maybe their body just takes a second to get it out. But you know, if you're gonna engage, you know, you gotta do it on their uh their level. You know, if they, if they take a couple minutes, then give them that minute, you know. Very frustrating for Hollis. It's one of his biggest things is people not letting him speak. Mm. Yeah, even at the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> They'll address me, and I'm like, he's sitting right here. <laughs> Ask him, you know, like, or like we're ordering food. What does he want? I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you ask him? You know, he knows what he wants. Uh, and how does that make you feel, Hollis? Bad. Bad. Sad. How about the medical industry? That was something we haven't talked about yet. Is is you're advocating for your own health, I and mean, do you do you face issues with that? Oh boy, how long do you have? <laughs> so with his adaptive equipment on his wheelchair, like uh, his mouse, you think uh, he Orders it through his insurance. Mm -hmm. 
Medicaid? I have no idea. Oh, wow. He has no idea how long or if he'll get it. Mm. Usually he gets paperwork saying it's been denied, but it's something that he's had for 20 years. Mm. Or like your chair, <laughs> this chair right here. Mm. <laughs> so Hollis has this chair right here. This is his um, manual chair. This mm -hmm. is what he uses to push himself around the house. And then he has his power chair. Can you see it right there? In the mm -hmm. So this chair originally got mangled. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't remember how. I, I did it. I messed up. It fell uh -huh. off the back of my car down the freeway. Mm -hmm. So he hadn't got a new chair in 10 years. So we call the insurance. What was this last summer? What was last summer? Okay, so. It happened in September. So right. August and September, the end of, yeah, you're right. Actually, it was after 4th of July. So it happened. Uh, so it's been over 10 years, but insurance will only cover one chair on insurance, even though he needs both of them. He can't get to the toilet and to his bed in that big manual chair. He needs this chair, no. big electric chair, sorry. And this chair, We've got it pieced together from New Motion, but everything's on loan. He was mm -hmm. a chair that would make him fall when he tried to transfer at nighttime by himself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, bruises on his legs, um, you know, accidents because, you know, he's trying to get to the toilet and he falls. The, the chair was unstable. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, New Motion is the people that like kind of help him with his wheelchair. They were able to piece together a, a chair for him, but it's still the, the tires need to be wider so there's more stability and stuff. But so what? That's almost September mm. five months away. Mm -hmm. So seven months we've been trying to get him a new chair through mm -hmm. all these programs, and he's still sitting here. Yeah. Uh, because insurance gets denied it all the time so we're going through like programs and stuff and the chair that he had that i mangled uh i mean it was loose it was falling apart you know it mm. it was time for a new chair anyway so like you know his mom was like oh this is great this is great you get a new chair out of it you know like <laughs> you deserve that and here we are still mm. trying well and i know i know something that you've struggled with before is that chairs most chairs are not made for somebody who has this type of movements that you have and you have you have struggled with how how safe the chairs have been for you yeah yeah um, I, I, <laughs> mm, what i oh
he has friends that are his hands, you know, because he's a designer, he has friends that are his hands. So, but they're pretty close to getting it all pieced together. But mm. he got a donation from Custom Powder Works. He powder coated his chair and colored his tea picks and, mm -hmm. and mercury and all it? the metal work for it. A lot of people, he put in a lot of money that he saved for it, and a lot of people helped donate time and materials. Yeah. And it, it, it's almost uh -huh. mm. his, his first wheelchair fully built is almost done. Don't get us wrong, Hollis builds wheelchairs all the time, but him and his buddies come up with a better idea halfway through when they strip it. I'm so amazed that they. They, they got here. I'm so proud of them all because he'll come like we stripped it. I'm like mm. two years for mm. design work. Mm. But he knows what's best, you know. <laughs> but that that passion has drove, you know, his disability has drove his passion. Yeah. Make it accessible for himself because the industry does not. Right. It tries um, to be a, a one a one size fits all and that's not gonna work. Exactly. Um, I'm two years um, I'm curious. When you drive it around. What people will say. What people will say. About about yeah. because it looks very different, very different than than a typical chair. What about um? There's one more thing I'd like to touch base on about like um just government funding for disabled people, like how much like. Uh, how much you know you uh you go without because you don't have the money that you need mm -hmm. you know yeah. and how long with other people too that are disabled how does that affect you uh -huh. how much do you get to breathe cancer every month nineteen dollars he gets for food stamps not now there's a covid kicker but right a disabled man who can't work it's nineteen dollars for food stamps. I don't get it. Yeah. He gets a he gets a check from the state. He has to pay his bills, and <gasps> that leftover money <laughs> has to buy food. So um, now he's struggling for anything. You know, he gets haircuts at home, and you know, stuff that other people go spend money on. And um, um, uh, I'm only allowed to have $2,000 in the bank and he loses benefits or he'll lose his benefits. Mm -hmm. No. 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 Um, Oregon. Oregon has a able able savings, savings for, dis for disabled and I people, and I just found it. Yeah. Because OHP calls us up, says they need his signature and check his bank statements. And he's been saving his money because there's COVID, so there's nothing to do. So like now I'm like, I don't want to, I, I don't, you might have had more than you should have. I wasn't sure of the limit. I, I wasn't sure of the limit and I was so afraid that he was going to lose his benefits. If he lost his Oregon home plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he found this account where he can he can put money in it and nobody can touch it and he can't lose his benefits fortunately. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, you have both. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, he has both. Which for him, fortunately, with SSDI, he can work and make under a certain amount and not lose his benefits. Mm -hmm. But if he just had SSI, he'd be he'd be screwed out of that. Yeah. So fortunately for him, because he craves to work, he loves it. Yeah. Now, fortunately for him, he's got some people that are looking out for him that can help advocate and get him the things he needs. But other people don't always have that voice. Uh, he had uh, some people from SES and his bank help him figure out how much money he can make a month, you know, and how many hours he could work so that he didn't lose the benefits. <laughs> what a stressful thing. I just go to work. <laughs> like, yeah. Can I go home? And, you know, I don't have to worry about am I going to lose my health insurance because I got a couple hundred bucks in the bank? Yeah. I do. And I don't believe it's I. SSI. Do you believe they up there now? I misunderstood. Go ahead again. What have they? What have they? What have they? Why haven't they? Up. 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 The amount of two thousand dollars. Sorry, I'm not understanding. Give us a sec. In thirty. In 30 years, they haven't up the, the limit from, from $2,000. Yeah. And we just got three, three, three. COVID yeah. checks. That makes that makes no sense. that makes no sense. Mm. We can't up disability, but we'll hand out we'll mm. give you twelve hundred extra bucks here and there. <laughs> so is there anything else you want the world to know, Hollis? Be more patient with disabled people. Then, um, what we are through. Other people don't know what we are going through. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe for other people to treat yeah. disabled people as people too. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. And this is stuff that I've heard Hollis tell me. I've been a caregiver for five years. We've talked a lot about these kind of things. So you know, sometimes I can help remind him of things that, you know, when he's put on the spot, he can't think of everything. But he, he tells me all the time, it'd be nice if people just treated everybody as people, no matter if you have a mental disability or a physical disability, everybody's a person. Sometimes he says everybody's shit smells the same. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And it sounds like you think that um that people with disabilities should be more visible. So yeah. we can see you more. Yeah, why should he sorry, go sorry. The sidewalk to let someone walk and their dog go by? Right? Why can't that person just step off to the side and let him cruise by? Why is he the one having to detour? You know? And break my chair. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your dog walked by. And your excited Eugene. Eugene has mm -hmm. billiard mm -hmm. center mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. which partners mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Oregon Adaptive Sports mm -hmm. or Christine at Hulu and and Mount Bachelor. That's my favorite time of the year. Be thankful for that program that he can participate in. Uh, yeah, I hope, and I hope to to promote to promote and I hope you be able to promote misguided outfits as an outsource for people with disabilities mm. so they can find some fun things to do that, that they don't normally get to do that they should be able to do. Like go skiing. Uh, yeah. Or hiking. Or hiking. Or camping. Or, mm. or fishing. Or, or dating. Dating, yes. <laughs> yeah. All of that at once. <laughs> or, oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you again for taking the time to, to see us this morning. And uh, have a great afternoon, Hollis, and a great weekend. And I hope COVID goes away so you can get out there and and uh, cruise some sidewalks again. <laughs> well, thanks for thinking of them. Um, yes. This, this is really cool. Thanks for what you guys do.